Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements in my practice where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place as you listen to The Bright Side every day. You are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we welcome your phone calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear recommended on the program, 866-735-2470 is the phone number for the Brightside Ben team, Brightside Ben phone team. You can order products directly from the phone, from the phone team, or you can go to the website, brightsideben.com or pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. You can buy products off the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website as well for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. And, of course, you can always just get your products at the wholesale price. You can call the Brightside Ben phone team, too, 866-735-2470. They can tell you all about it. And if you want to purchase any of our Truth Treatment products, including our Retinol 5% Gel, made with 5% retinol. You're, gonna, you're not going to find that anywhere, folks. 5% retinol, non-irritating, preservative-free, no waxes, no fillers, lots of vitamin C. You can find out all about it at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, we are talking about the adrenal glands and the relationship to high blood pressure. We left off talking about salt and blood pressure, and the hormone aldosterone, little known hormone. You don't hear that. You don't hear that one thrown around too much on health shows, aldosterone. You hear about cortisol, and we hear about adrenaline. We hear about other adrenal hormones. Certainly, we hear about the sex hormones, the the reproductive hormones, progesterone, estrogen, testosterone, but you hardly ever hear about this stuff, aldosterone, which is too bad because there's a very, very important link between aldosterone and elevated blood pressure hypertension. When we're under stress, aldosterone is secreted from the adrenal glands and the the net result is an increase in blood pressure. Aldosterone is a major stress hormone. Aldosterone is a major hypertension hormone. If you don't know about aldosterone and you have hypertension, listen up. It's really important stuff and understanding how to work with this hormone is a key to understanding how to lower your blood pressure. Stress leads to hyperadrenal activity, leads to aldosterone secretion, leads to more salt in the blood, leads to more water in the blood. Salt always pulls water with it, and this is how the body raises the blood pressure. Salt is released into the blood via the hormone. The blood volume, the blood becomes more watery, and the volume expands, and that increases the pressure. Doctors will tell you that aldosterone is elevated in some people for unknown reasons. It's just elevated. Nobody, for some reason, they haven't made the connection that there might be some kind of stressor in the system. Aldosterone just goes up. This is what doctor, this is what the medical model is, will tell you. Aldosterone secretion is just elevated. It's called primary aldosteronism, PA. What does that mean, primary aldosteronism? It means, primary means there's no cause. Primary means it's the first reason. It's not secondary to anything. It's the, it just happens. How can, you, how can a medical person think this? It's primary. Another word they use is essential. They call it essential hypertension, primary aldosteronism. That means there's no preceding cause. 
Primary means no cause. It's not secondary to anything. It's causeless. It just happens. And it's a great mystery. <laughs> this is unbelievable. The medical model will tell you that stress hormone goes up for no known reason. I'm not kidding you. They're searching for the cause of this excessive secretion of aldosterone, stress hormone. It hasn't dawned on our brilliant medical scientists that maybe elevated stress hormone is related to elevated stress. Sugar, toxicity, foods, respiration, low, lo low levels of oxygen, psychological, mental stressors. They're searching all over what could be the cause of this elevated stress hormone. I'm not kidding you. The latest culprit for elevated stress, uh, elevated aldosterone, elevated stress hormone, is the most popular whipping boy, at least modern 21st century most popular whipping boy for poor health, our genetics, genes. According to an article published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science, Sciences, this was uh, a month ago, August, August 15th, 2015. Exactly, this is, I'm not kidding you guys, exactly why aldosterone levels go crazy has been a bit of a mystery. But according to University of Michigan researchers, the mystery may now be solved. It's genetics. It's our crazy DNA that just mutates for some reason because it's just our goofy, stupid, mentally retarded cells and genes that spontaneously mutate. That's my words, they didn't say that. According to this article, this is, this is really where it gets juicy. According to this article, we all have these mutations. We're all messed up. And what's more, according to Dr. William Rainey, professor of internal medicine and the author of the study, quote, our, our findings suggest that most of us have the origins of PA in our adrenals in the form of cell level mutations that cause dysregulation in hormone production, but they're not severe enough to lead to disease, i.e. hypertension, unquote. So we're all, this is what he's saying, we're all messed up genetically, it's just that it happens to show up as disease in some of us. This is one of the dumbest things I've ever heard a medical person say. Who cares about mutated genes? It's why the gene mutates that matters. If we believe that our genes mutate for no known reason, and this is the medical model, this is what the medical model will tell you, our genes just mutate. That's why people have their breasts hacked off because they've got a mutated gene that just happens to be mutated. If we believe that our genes mutate for no reason, now we've lost our power to address our own health conditions and we're stuck with being medicalized. And this is sneaky, dirty pool. This is what's so offensive and egregious, and in my opinion, anti-human being. If we believe that our genes don't have any reason for mutating, they just change. They just spontaneously change for no known reason. Now we're stuck with the medical model. What this doctor, Dr. William Rainey, and what the medical model doesn't understand is genes don't mutate accidentally. They are exquisitely responsive to their environment. They change in response to what the cell is sitting in, what the environment of the cell is wallowing in. A lack of oxygen will cause a genetic change. Toxicity will cause a genetic change. Sugar will cause a genetic change. A lack of the mighty 90 nutrients will cause a genetic change. Now, who controls these factors? We do. This is why it's so important not to pay attention to this genetic model of illness. Now, if you're born or if a baby's born with some kind of genetic disease, some kind of genetic problem, cystic fibrosis, some kind of uh, uh, storage disease, glycogen storage disease, they call them, whatever, that's because as the fetus was being formed, the genetics, the genes didn't have the nutrients they need to form correctly. In this way, there are no genetic diseases. The genetic diseases, or what we call genetic diseases, are really responses of the genes to some kind of environmental problem. And by environment, I'm talking about what the gene is sitting in, or what the cell is sitting in. Why is this important? Because we have control over our biochemical environment, largely. Through foods, through nutrition, and through oxygen, and through relaxing the stress response. This is such good news, you guys. All right. We'll continue when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Community. So you okay, we are back 
on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, the longevity products, skin care, formulations, ingredients, something you may have heard about or read about in the news, something somebody may have told you, let us help you. 844-236-6010 is our number today and every day on the bright side. And if you want to purchase any of the Longevity products, please call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470 or head over to my blog, pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. We update both regularly with news stories as well as blog posts, and you can purchase products or sign up to join the Longevity team right off the website. You can also go to brightsideben.com. That's brightsideben.com. All right, we'll get your calls here momentarily, so hang tight. If you're on hold, a couple more things I want to say about, uh, well, a lot I want to say about aldosterone. Tomorrow we'll tell you how you can lower your aldosterone on your own. Of course, re reducing stress, that's a key factor. Aldosterone is a stress hormone. Doctors are mystified. I mean, it's funny, but it's not really that, it's not ha-ha funny, it's sad funny. Doctors are just mystified. Why would aldosterone, why would stress levels go up? Well, let me clarify it for your doctor. Stress hormone goes up when we're under stress. Lack of oxygen, lack of nutrition, the mighty 90 essential nutrients, elevated toxicity, and that includes sugar. These all represent an emergency to the body. They represent a survival threat in the body, and the genes respond accordingly. Hormones don't just go up for no reason. Stress hormones just don't wildly elevate on their own. Genes don't just mutate on their own. Psychological stress, mental stress, emotional stress, the genes respond accordingly. Physical stress, the genes respond accordingly. The genes aren't mutated. That's an ugly word. Mutated means they're contorted, they're perverted. They've just twisted. They just got ugly all of a sudden. They're not mutated. They've just changed to handle the stress. The problem isn't the genes causing the elevations in the stress hormone. It's the survival threat. The survival threat is the primary cause. It's not primary aldosteronism, it's primary stress. Why is this so hard for our medical people to understand? And again, stress is, stress is physical, stress is emotional, stress is psychological, stress is spiritual, stress is multidimensional. And it's really, as we've said, and I don't, wanna, I don't wanna confuse the issue, it's really the response to stress. It's not the stress itself, it's how we respond to the stress that's the problem. The genes haven't mutated, they've just changed. They've just responded. Now if you skip that step, if you skip the stress step, that's our control point via our lifestyle, and you go right to the gene, now we're stuck with drugs. Now we, we have no option because the gene is just crazy. Now we don't have any control, it just changed. Now we got nothing to do with it. We're not responsible, of course. We don't have to blame ourselves because our genes are just stupid. Our genes are just dumb. They just changed on their own. Now we're stuck with the medical model. Now you're stuck with genetic therapy. That's the latest. It's going to be genetic, genetic therapy. And who, uh, why genetic therapy? Who controls genetic therapy? Your doctor, the drug companies. Again, taking the power away from us and putting it in some authority medical model higher power that's not God. Not only is this idea of blaming genes nonsense, but it's actually dangerous. And for the medical model, it's self-serving. We're all potentially sick, according to the medical model. We're all diseases waiting to happen, which means we're all patients in waiting. We're all potential customers because we're all mutated and we're all sick. This aldosterone mechanism, by the way, is how your ACE inhibitor drugs work. Losartan, Cozar, Prinavil. This is how they this is how they exert their antihypertensive effects. Aldosterone secretion is triggered by something called ACE, A-C-E, and ACE inhibitor drugs inhibit ACE, as the name is as implied in the name. An ACE inhibitor drug inhibits ACE that shuts down aldosterone. This is how the medical model works. Never mind that aldosterone has been evolved to take care of our stress, to raise blood pressure in an emergency, Shutting down ACE, ACE inhibiting, no aldosterone, no salt in the blood, lower blood pressure. The problem is for ACE to be inhibited, it has to be poisoned. This is how drugs work. Drugs don't magically just work. They poison the system. And this is true. Anytime you hear the word inhibitor or blocker or anti, 
you know, the classification of a drug, ACE inhibitors, beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, anti-inflammatories, anti-hypertensives. Whenever you hear these words that imply some kind of negative activity, anti or blocking or inhib inhibition, you're dealing with poison, period. Not poetically, not rhetorically, not hyperbolically, literally. You're dealing with a poison. Now, of course, all drugs are poisons, but the most egregious ones are the ones that have the, the, the designation poison right in the name. Inhibitor, blocker. How, does, how do you think something blocks? How do you think a chemical blocks a chemistry, biochemistry in the body? It doesn't, just, it doesn't just ask it nicely. It poisons it. In the case of ACE inhibitors, what you're, what's, occurring, what's occurring is the body is kicking in with a stress response, and so you're inhibiting the body's ability to handle stress. You're inhibiting the body's ability to handle emergencies. You're suppressing the emergency or the stress response. Now, I'm just a pharmacist. I'm nowhere near as smart as your doctor, who, of course, went to medical school. I'm only a pharmacist, but it seems to me that if we have an elevated stress response, if we have an emergency response, maybe we should be checking on what the body is perceiving as a survival threat, rather than shutting down the body's ability to respond to the survival threat via a poison. And because the emergency usually involves reactions to foods or incompletely digested foods of some, kind, of some sort, digestive issues, high blood sugar, low levels of oxygen, what it means is that we can probably address our stress issues and our high blood pressure issues and our elevated aldosterone issues and our elevated stress hormone issues ourselves without our doctor. I didn't go to medical school. I'm not as smart as your doctor, but that's just what it seems to me. If you got elevated stress hormones, it seems to me we, maybe we could figure out what the stress is and reduce it. Food, digestion, blood sugar, respiration. As always, the best ways to take care of our chronic health issues involve our lifestyle choices. Now, aldosterone is a fluid and salt control hormone, fluid and salt control hormone, and this link to salt is really, really important because it, there's a clue there. The link that aldosterone has to salt is our clue to lowering aldosterone levels, and there's an incredibly easy and important strategy, way to naturally lower your aldosterone levels without ACE inhibitor drugs, without genetic therapy, without having to worry about any, any, of, the, any of the tools or devices or pharmaceutical interventions that the medical model uses. We'll talk about that tomorrow on the Bright Side as we continue talking high blood pressure and the adrenal glands, all as it relates to the skin and hyperpigmentation. I haven't forgotten about the skin. We're going to be talking lots about hyperpigmentation, dark spots, and ways that you can reduce dark spots on your own, at home, using simple cosmetic or, or a topical skin health strategies. We'll talk about that tomorrow and in the coming days on the Bright Side. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. I'll see if we can get one call in before we go to break. Maria in Florida, what's up? Welcome to the Bright Side. Hi, Ben. How are you? Doing good. What's going on, Maria? Oh, my God. This mouse thing is driving me crazy. Oh, I, I talked to you. Did I talk to you last week? We tried, but it, it, it went off, so it's coming to call you again. Okay, hang on, Maria, because I got a break, and then we'll get you first up when we come back, so don't go away. All right, if you're on hold, we'll get to you as well. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Maria in Florida about burning mouth syndrome. Correct, Maria? Is that right? Um, I think that's, uh, that's what it is. It's really dry right now. Is so it for you? On my you... lips. Okay. It, does, it burns on the tongue and in the upper part of your mouth kind of thing? That, that happened at the very beginning, like for two excruciating days. Oh, that's and awful. And then after that, it just comes and go, but more like dry, like my that... tongue. I and I became even afraid to eat, and I've been I don't blame you. as healthy as possible. I joined Joint DVD a couple of weeks ago. I, I bought the digestive pack. I started that, like, uh, maybe roughly two weeks ago. Did I tell you about that? How did you know about that? 
to use well, digestive support. To you. Okay, good for you. Good for you, Maria. <laughs> okay, well, let me tell you. First of all, let me tell the listeners. You can't think of anything more miserable. There's a lot of miserable oh things God. that can happen to the body, <laughs> but I'm telling you, if you can imagine the misery of having a scalding, burning tongue and mouth, it is just agony beyond description, as I'm sure you know, Maria, I don't have to tell you, but for the listeners yes. who haven't heard of this before, it's called burning oh mouth God, syndrome. I, I, it, it depresses me at times and everything, and I'm okay. very, you know, well, here's, I'm going and everything. And, oh. well, here's the problem with burning mouth syndrome, okay, or with treating burning mouth syndrome. Doctors and patients, understandably patients, not understandably doctors, think that that's the problem. It's not the problem, Maria. It's a sign of the problem. You can't treat signs. You can only treat problems. Do you follow me? The burning mouth syndrome is the result of something. It's the end result of something. Once you have the burning mouth, as miserable it is, as it is, you can't do anything about it. Where you have power is over the cause. Do you know that most yeah. people have burning mouth syndrome or women, especially postmenopausal or menopausal women? Um, you, no, I, I read a little bit about her, it could be hormonal. Yes, exactly. I am I'm you're right years around old. menopause or postmenopause. Yeah. This, these are your, your, you know, the most likely uh, suspect when it comes to patients. When it comes to likely patients, it's you. So what does that tell okay. you? Well, it tells you there's an involvement with female hormone estrogen. Now, keep in mind, men make estrogen too. It's not just a female hormone, but women make more. So they're going to be more likely to have burning mouth syndrome. And really, all inflammatory issues tend to affect women more than men. Autoimmune issues tend to affect women more than men. And all of these are related to the inflammatory effects of estrogen and more so than just estrogen poorly processed estrogen estrogen is processed and metabolized and cleared out of the body through the digestive tract through the bile in the gallbladder through the liver through the intestines so all, and, and pro gallbladder well bingo you know right there you can see a problem with estrogen and guaranteed by the way nobody just has burning mouth syndrome maria you have had to have had a problem with menopause menstrual problems when you were bleeding or some kind of female reproductive issues correct when when you were um, younger anything um, actually i have pretty decent um, well, you don't know that you don't know that you couldn't have burning mouth syndrome you, what else no. do you have going on what other health challenges do you have is that um, the only one? Oh. No, I actually, I changed my whole lifestyle and this kind of style. No, 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 anyway. sweetheart, Maria. Wait, diabetes, uh, pre-diabetic, okay. they, they, uh, and, and high cholesterol. All of and it. And all this, when I thought that I was like eating the healthiest diet in, exactly. in the world. I started exactly. eating meat again. I quit all wheat. Because we don't, what homework. we think is a healthy diet isn't. And this is why when people tell me, oh, well, yeah, I eat. Exactly. We don't know. We just know what CNN tells us. <laughs> and we know what, what, what our doctor tells us. Neither of which are good sources for health information. Not CNN and not the doctor. And by the doctor, I mean the medical model. And by CNN, I mean the mainstream press. So here's the deal. Burning mouth syndrome is, inf I'm going to cut to the chase, okay? I'm going to make it very simple. Burning mouth syndrome is inflammation in the nerves of the tongue and the mouth. There's lots of nerves in your tongue and your mouth, okay? There's only a couple places that have more nerves than in your tongue and your mouth. So burning mouth syndrome is a tongue and it involves inflammation in the tongue, you know, nerves of the tongue and the mouth. Inflammation means attack. Something is attacking your body. Food, digestion, and a lack of oxygen are the three things that you want to address. And of course, the mighty 90 essential nutrients. If you have digestive issues, you must have them or you would have, still have your gallbladder. So when you have your digestive issues, I'm not going to say if you have, I'm going to say when you notice them, link those to foods. If you're constipated, which is more likely than diarrhea or yes, loose stools. Very yes, very constipated. Okay. Now we're talking here. All right. Nobody's going to think to link your constipation to your burning mouth, but that's a key piece of information. You can't control the burning mouth, but you can control the constipation. The patient. Do you see? You see how much more powerful you are now that you made this connection. Burning mouth is like, what am I going to do? How am I going to take care of this? Constipation, you can take care of. Constipation is a digestive health issue. It involves weakness in the intestines and it involves stress in the intestines. So what it means is you've got to start looking to foods. I'd be fasting and doing a food diary right away. And by the way, when you fast, you're going to notice if you have burning mouth issues, you're going to notice that they subside. You absolutely 100% need to be addressing your hormones. I'd be using progesterone cream. I'd be doing it today or maybe pregnenolone capsules. Probiotics are a must-have for all female hormone issues, for everybody really, but especially 
if you have estrogen issues. Please don't underestimate the uh, importance of the connection or the relationship between good bacteria and estrogen processing. Estrogen is really dangerous stuff if it's not processed correctly. Estrogen, of course, is an important hormone, but we have very tiny amounts of it in the blood because it's so darn potent, and it has to be cleared out, eliminated quickly. And it's cleared out and eliminated largely through bile. Without a gallbladder, you're going to have an issue with clearing out, ex or clearing out toxic or es excess estrogen. Use lecithin every day with all your meals. If, even if you're not eating, do a little bit of lecithin. It will help you. Uh, bile salts, absolutely vital for anybody who doesn't have a gallbladder. The ultimate enzymes, which contain bile salts, or like a, I have that. Yeah. make sure after all your meals, even take them on an empty stomach. Just get some bile salts in you. You can also use and, uh, uh, lecithin. Uh, how do I use the lecithin? Granules and water. Spoonful of granules in water. Drink them down with your meals. It's, it's okay. tastes pretty good. I like the taste of it anyway. You can also get something called lipase to go with your digestive enzymes. You probably want to do some apple cider vinegar. Make sure you're doing the entire Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients and keep yourself away from sugar. You're already pre-diabetic. That means bread and pasta and potatoes and burritos yeah. and anything, that, cereal, anything that breaks down into sugar. Yeah, I'm, I'm, that's done. Yeah. Okay, good That's for you. Great. Sounds like you're serious about this. That that burning mouth syndrome, that'll put the fear of God in you, I'm telling you. All right, well, I'm glad you're keeping your sense of humor. I hope we helped you out, Marie. I'm going to let you go now, okay? Have a beautiful okay, thank day. You, ben. Thank God you, God bless. So much. Thank you for what you're doing for everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Marie. God bless you. Okay, Bye. let's go to uh, Deborah in Texas. What is up, Deborah? Welcome to the Bright Side. Deborah, Deborah. Do we have Deborah? Okay, going once. Deborah, Deborah, we'll let. Did I mess this up here? Is Deborah there? Deborah? Hello? Hey, Deborah. Hey. Sorry. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, not again. No, okay. Um, <laughs> That's me. That's my fault. If I could just give you a little bit of history. Back in 2006, I was diagnosed with um, uh, metastasized stage 4 breast cancer. Okay. And, what year? Uh, 2006? Yes. You sound great. Yeah, you're doing something right. Thank you. Well, you know, they put me on a study with Glexton, Klein, and Smith because I refused um, uh, radiation and chemotherapy. Okay. And um, and was the only one to actually survive the the drugs the, uh, trial. The, the uh, listen, uh, the only one to survive. You mean everybody else died? They just said they weren't on the trial anymore. Okay, gotcha. Hey, listen, hang, you, we got to take a break. Don't go away, okay? We'll get to you when okay. we come back. Don't go away. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Worry? Okay, we are back on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Deborah in Texas. Deborah, are you there? Yes. Okay, talk to me real quick. Okay, uh, so anyway, I've been going to Texas Oncology for 10 years, and um, there, the last time I went in, they said my tumor cell count had gone up. Okay. And um, they want to, or they prescribe me letrozole. Okay. From our, uh, an estrogen blocker. Blocker, right. Yeah, so um, they have how been... Can, how can we help you? Well, I want to know if there's some alternatives. Yes, there's it. lots. First of all, as I was saying to the last caller, Maria in Florida, it's not so much estrogen that is the problem, it's the processed estrogen. Estrogen is processed into metabolites that need to be cleared out of the body. And if your gallbladder and your liver and your intestine, your digestive system, the, the bacteria in your gut, if they're not everything, all of these systems aren't firing on all cylinders, you're going to get buildups in toxic, toxic estrogen. Are you following me? Uh -huh. so it's the breakdown product. And tell us to your doctor, by the way. They'll understand this. You got a pen? Yes. Write this down. Catechol estrogens. Ask your doctor if they know about those. And I'll spell that Catechol. for you. Catechol. Catechol. C-A-T. E C H O L, catechol estrogens. These are breakdown products, intermediary products of estrogen processing that build up when your gallbladder is messed up and your digestive system in general, including your liver, is messed up. Are you with me? Yeah. Deborah, you have to have had digestive issues. Okay? You know this? No. You, okay, well, look for them. It has to do with how you're processing fats and how you're processing foods in general, but especially fatty foods. No issues with the gallbladder or liver that you know of? 
I mean, no, you have to... uh, all those, uh, when they do those blood labs on me, all mm. that stuff comes out real good. My no, it doesn't matter the blood labs. It matters what happens when you're in the bathroom. It matters oh. what happens when you're sitting at home, when you're not doing anything. You don't need a blood lab. You need to check like your bowel movements. Five times a day. Well, that, that's not necessarily a good thing. I can't tell you. It could be loose. You could be losing nutrients. I can't no, tell you. Not loose. Okay. Well, then cramping or bloating or discomfort of some kind, you've got to look for it, and especially linked with fats. In addition to that, you want to make sure you're using the best fermented, uh, best probiotic supplement you could find in addition to fermented foods. Okay. This is how you clear estrogen out. All right, I'm going to tell you some blockers in a second, but right now we want to get you to clear out the excess estrogen, the catechol estrogens. All right, you with me? Yes. Okay, probiotics and fermented foods and anything you could do to support bile. Get on the ultimate enzymes, start using ex extra bile salts. There's a couple of amino acids that can help you make bile. One is called glycine. Another one is called taurine. You might want to start using those. Uh, apple cider vinegar after all your meals as well. In terms of estrogen blockers, and there's a few of them and that are non-pharmaceutical, non a couple of interesting ones are DIM and I3C. Okay, but find both of those in a health food store. DIM, DIM is actually made by a guy in Boulder here. Uh, and I3C is another one. You can find both of those, as I say, in health food stores. Uh, Chrysin, C-H-R-Y-S-I-N, is also helpful. And then vitamins A and E both have some estrogen-blocking effects. Again, they're fatty hormones. And, and whenever I hear of an estrogen problem, I think of problems with fats. So you may be deficient in these very important vitamins. 20,000 IU of vitamin A. And then also... Uh, uh, about 400 to 800 IU of vitamin E. Zinc is also helpful, 50 milligrams of zinc picolinate. You probably want to get on the Fucoid Z as well. And of course, the Healthy Star Pack, that goes without saying. Focus on fats, focus on digestion, and focus on anti or estrogen blocking at anti-estrogen. Last but not least, pregnenolone capsules and or progesterone cream might be help for you, helpful for you as well. All right, there's, there's lots more, but that's a great place for you to start. Okay, Deborah, I'm going to let you go. Thank you so okay. much for your call. God bless you. Good luck with everything. All right, Robert in Nevada. What's up, man? How you doing? Farms has been a huge thing. Thanks for taking my call. Appreciate it. Um, sure. I just made my first foray into juicing yesterday morning. Okay. What did you juice? Uh, nice little, uh, uh, I'm sorry? What did you juice? Yeah, uh, I took a good-sized cucumber, two small carrots, uh, a little bit of water, and too much salt, <laughs> and uh, mixed it up. Tastes pretty good, but here's the thing. I about had a reaction to it. Um, I couldn't stay off the toilet. So I guess my big question is, did my body just freak out with that? Yeah, going it could have. What, what happened? Too much, too much stuff, plus all the fiber in the nutri in the juice. So you may want to okay. reduce the reduce the juice, reduce the, um, the concentration of the juice, dilute it with water, or just okay. do less, and then build yourself back up. And then you may want to okay. consider using some enzymes as well with the juice, if, especially if you have a history of digestive issues. You may have a you may not have enough enzymes, but you may. Have, it sounds to me like you did a little bit too much fiber, um, mm. and then you may also want to make sure that you're using some fermented foods, fermented uh, fermented uh, foods in addition to that some probiotics as well, sauerkraut, miso, tempeh, fermented vegetables of all kinds, and then also some uh, supplemental probiotics. Okay? So it was just too much. Too much I'm thinking it was too much, part. especially if you did a whole bunch and never did it before. That sometimes happens with seeds, with flax seeds. If you, people start uh -huh. doing flax seeds, that, that, help, that sometimes happens. By the way, for the estrogen folks, uh, flax seeds and all fiber can help you clear out excess estrogen, too. Hope that helps, Robert. I'm going to let you go. Okay, buddy? You did. Thanks, Thank bud. you, man. Have a good day. All right, let's see if we get one more in here. Joy in Florida, welcome to the bright side. Joy. Joy, Hello. Joy. Hey, what's up, Joy? Hey, um... I'm a 68-year-old woman, and okay. um, my hair is white. It's My mother went white early, okay. which is fine. However, um, I'm really losing my hair. And okay. about three years ago, I went to um, a dermatologist, as recommended by my primary care physician. And he, he summarized it up by just having male pattern baldness. Well, here, but, let me... Um, you want, let me tell you what's happening, okay? Okay. The hair, the hair to the body, the hair is irrelevant. Your heart's important. Your liver's important. You know, your, your lungs are important. Your internal organs are important. But the nails, the skin, and the hair, they're less important. So under conditions of deficiency, under conditions of stress, your body will, will uh, harness or, or uh, shunt uh, nutrients to the core of your body. 
and away from your hair and away from your nails and away from your skin. This is why a good skin, a good uh, healthcare professional will always look at somebody's nails. The nails grow faster than any other part of the body. The hair also grows fast. So the hair and the nails and the skin are the first place the body will take nutrients away from, and this is why hair loss occurs. Now there's thyroidism, the thyroid is involved and hormones are involved, but the most important consideration is something burdening the body, and that includes a lack of nutrition. You follow me, Joy? Absolutely. Okay, so what you want to start to do is you want to start to look for places in the body where you can control. You can't control the hair loss, but you sure can control your sugar, and you sure can control your oxygen, and you sure can control your foods, and you sure can control your nutrients. So as with all health challenges, this is so simple, you guys. One day, I'm just going to be off the air because everybody's going to finally get it. I'm not necessary here. I'm telling you, Joy has the same problem that everybody has when they have a health challenge. Lack of nutrition, a buildup of toxicity, and that includes sugar when I say a buildup of toxicity, and then uh, issues with oxygenation, and that, and of course, psychological and mental, that goes without saying. So here's what you want to do. Number one, focus on your foods. Look for problems with foods. If you think you have great digestion, it's probably unlikely, but that's not going to help you. You want to find problems. You want to look for places that you can solve. Do a food diary. Keep track of all the foods you eat and how you respond to those foods. Then start patching up the gut with the Biolumin Nightly Essence, with the Ultimate Enzymes, apple cider vinegar after all your meals, maybe some lecithin and bile salts if you want to go all out. Then you start to work on the blood sugar. And this is true for everybody with a health issue. Everything I'm saying to Joy goes for everybody with a health issue. Work on the digestive system. Then you go to the blood sugar. I mean, stabilizing your blood sugar, keeping blood sugar down by stopping or, or reducing your intake of bagels and pasta and fruits and fruit juice and dessert and oatmeal and potatoes and all the foods that break down into sugar. Use your sweeties and your electrolyte nutrients, your potassium and sodium and calcium. Of course, you'll get those in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine and the Healthy Star Pack and those are must-haves beyond tangy tangerine in the healthy start pack. Then thirdly, you're going to start to work on relaxing the body. The body heals when it's relaxed. It loses the hair when it's freaked out. You know, that's a stereotype. People lose their hair when they're under stress. Why? Because when you're under stress, your body marshals all of its resources towards the core of your body, towards the, the muscles, the large muscles, and towards the heart and the lungs, and away from the hair. So relaxing the body is also extremely important. And then start to focus on fats. And when it comes to digestion, anyway, focus on your fats because there's a very important relationship between estrogen, estrogen processing, and hair loss as well. And again, that goes back to the digestive enzymes and the bile salts and the apple cider vinegar. So you've got three major points that you're going to address. Digestion, sugar, and oxygenation, deep breathing techniques, and stress, stress management techniques. And the good news is, Joy, not only are you going to get your, your, hair, stop, will you, uh, your hair stop falling out, but you're going to feel better. You're going to increase your longevity and you're going to reduce the likelihood of ugly degenerative diseases. Thanks for your call, Joy. We're just out of time, and I apologize if we left you on hold. As always, call back tomorrow, and we'll get you first up. Just tell our call screen we left you on hold. Thanks for listening, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Check out my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, and truthtreatments.com for my skin health products. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now. Services.